Hello guys, uh, Fru here. Welcome to our demo for today. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a business intelligence tool that could be a very important aspect to your data ecosystem or your data stack when you think about visualization or reporting. Uh, having a, a sleek modern tool that can help with that could be a very powerful for data teams. Now, uh, the tool we're going to be looking at here is beep.io. We're going to look at the tool, uh, do a demonstration of it, and I'm going to make some commentaries along the way. Uh, you can access beep.io by going to the website, and uh, it does seem uh, pretty interesting. It seems to be uh, web-based in the cloud, so uh, definitely nothing to install, and they have uh, a pricing model you can check out. Uh, Beep connects to Snowflake, which is uh, the modern uh, cloud data warehouse uh, we've used for a lot of the demos in uh, on, the, on this channel. So given that connectivity, we're going to be using it to see how we can connect to our Snowflake instance, uh, access the sample data warehouse, and do some visualizations on top of this data. Now, Snowflake has a native visualization tool which you can use, uh, but if that doesn't suffice for you and you're out looking for something else, uh, for whatever reason, uh, Beep might be a, a starting point or something to, to consider. So. With that said, we're going to dive right in into uh, just a quick uh, walkthrough of the product. Uh, you can access it and try that for free, which is what we're going to do here. So my features might be a little bit limited given that we're looking at uh, using the free version, uh, but I'm sure there might be more features if you go with uh, the paid uh, version. So just bear that in mind as we go through our demo for today. Uh, as always, uh, you can sign up with your Gmail or you can create a brand new account. And the process of creating that account is going to walk you through setting up a connection, which I already did. So I'm not going to create an account again. I'm going to use my uh, demo account that I just created here a few uh, minutes ago. And it allows us to log in into our platform. So this is the, the BEEP uh, platform we've logged into. Uh, I, I wonder what BEEP stands for. Probably business intelligence platform. Maybe that's what BEEP stands for. Um, but uh, once you log in, it brings you into a UI, very modern, uh, minimalistic, just really focus on the visualization and the reporting aspects. So as always, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the UI. On the right side here, there is uh, a configurations or just uh, information about the user and your profile. So that's my, my user. Uh, you can see my current tenant. I think that's what they call it. And you can probably change tenants. You can look at documentations, uh, your profile setting, or you can sign out. Now, on the left side here, this is where uh, we spend a lot of time uh, here, or, or my experience with the BIP reporting tool so far, uh, given the trial account that I have, is you basically coming into home. Uh, there are the ability to explore data. You can create spaces, which is one of the things that's very interesting here, uh, allowing you to create spaces, and you can collaborate and share your SQL queries, your insights, or your dashboards uh, to other team members. And you can manage projects too as well. So all of those, uh, your spaces can be tied to a project and you can version control the project. And this is something that's really uh, very important for teams that don't just want to build reports. But if you think about a report being uh, queries behind the scenes, you want to version control those queries. And this ties into your modern uh, stack like Git. So uh, we're going to go ahead here, create a new demo. Uh, so called take it through a YT demo. That's going to be our project. Uh, maybe it doesn't like that. All right, let's just call it a search. Now, if I had a Git repository, I can go ahead and put in my Git repository, which are public and private key. And I think the idea here would be every uh, work we do, which is very important, you don't want to do work and lose it, now gets backed up in Git, which uh, if you ask me, this is a very, very important uh, aspect to have from an STLC uh, lifecycle type of uh, approach. So in my case, I don't have Git, so I'm just going to go ahead and create a blank repository without necessarily version controlling that. So uh, just something to keep in mind uh, if you're going to be using uh, uh, if you're going to be using Beep for that now, it seems like I've encountered an, an issue, uh, which is basically my plan has reached the limit of projects. So I'm not surprised by that. So I'll just cancel that for now. 
uh, since I already have a project, we're going to work with this project that I have. So as you can see, with the free version that I'm using, just one project can exist. Uh, if I take a look at that project, now you can see the project artifacts. And you can have uh, different branches in Git, which you expect, where you can develop in dev environment and push your code uh, to production, uh, push your changes to production. Uh, but I'm not going to go into those aspects for now. I'm just going to do all my development and then show some key aspects uh, within this uh, reporting tool, uh, just like that. So uh, that's the projects area. The next thing that we uh, really focus on is the data sources. Uh, if we create projects, uh, we're going to need data sources to work with. And this allows us to create the data sources. In this case, I want to connect to my Snowflake instance and uh, report off of the sample data that's available within the Snowflake instance. And this could be your customer data, your sales data, uh, your logistics data that you want to do visualization or reporting on for your organization. So let's go back in here uh, to create a new data source. We basically hit that. Um, give it a good name. So just give it a name. And what we're going to do here, it says choose your dialect. Your dialect basically is the source uh, system. So in this case, my dialect would be Snowflake. That's what we're working with. I, I think dialect could be named uh, differently, but that's what they have. So once you select uh, Snowflake, what you're going to do is put in your URL uh, that connects to your Snowflake account. Uh, basically, this is the URL that we want. Let's go back here, paste that in. You're going to choose in your authentication. I'm going to keep that basic. And then uh, you want your username. So in this case, uh, the user would be tech with fru. We're going to put in our password in here as well. And we're going to select a database. So something to note is databases are case sensitive. Um, I found this out the uh, hard way. So you want to make sure that you get case sensitive uh, databases. Otherwise, you run into issues. Schema as well is case sensitive. So let's grab our schema. We want uh, the schema uh, in here since we're going after that data. And what warehouse do we want? I know my warehouse typically is the basic uh, compute warehouse. And we can do a direct connection here. And just like that, uh, we have a basic uh, connection to uh, the Snowflake instance. And we can test that. That was successful. If we're done, now we've created a connection uh, or, or data source, in this case, uh, available for us to use. So if I refresh that, but uh, that's what we have. The next piece that we're going to look at here is uh, the groups. So I'm not going to talk too much about groups, but you can uh, think about uh, being able to create teams and group them and manage your users, manage roles, uh, all of that available within uh, uh, the uh, big platform, giving you very robust uh, granular security. So this is not an area I'm going to spend a lot of time. Uh, you can schedule reports um, uh, here as well. And what was interesting to me is you can bring in extensions. I'm not quite sure uh, what these extensions would be. But I could imagine that folks can create extensions uh, kind of in the marketplace that you can reach out and grab those extensions and bring in into, uh, into the platform. But of course, you need the premium version for you uh, to do that. So that's uh, beep, uh, the UI in a, uh, in a quick walkthrough, a high level. Uh, let's try this. Uh, if you have an extension package, you can bring that. Uh, but let's focus in on what the typical analyst would do, which is working with data or exploring data. So in my case, uh, if you're going to explore data, the first thing that you want is to uh, have a, a data source that you, you can work with. Okay. So remember, we uh, let's go back here to our data sources. Remember the data sources we all set up from here. Um, that's what we're going to need. Just bear with me. It's just a little bit slow, which is not a surprise when you work with, uh, when you work with, um, just bear with me. Let's run query. So, uh, you can directly run a query on a data, uh, a source, but what I really want is to go back, just bear with me with the UI, uh, here. I don't want to run a query. I want to cancel out of this. So I want to go back into my explore data and the data source we're working with here is, uh, uh, the tech demo that we just created. The branch is going to be 
the master branch. I'm going to keep it as such. And you can select the data set here and that's customer. So uh, once you have your data source selected, a couple of things that we need is below here, you would see the worksheets uh, that are available and the attributes from your uh, data set that uh, we have. All right. And you can toggle and keep things aside. So what we're going to do here is just do a really super basic report to see the customers that we have. So what I'm going to do is look for customer. Let's do customer last name. Actually, you click on it. It brings it into the screen and let's just count the number of customers by last name that we have. So this uh, is a very quick way for us to bring that into the screen. By default, it, um, it shows you in a graph, in a grid uh, chart but there is no number, right? You might say there's no number in here. Even if I go to bar graph, it shows empty. Well, because I've created a visualization, but there is no data behind that visualization. And what we need here is data behind the visualization. So even, even if I change my visualization, my visualization, there's still no data behind that. And the way we get that data, you can see the SQL that's what we're going to be executing, uh, in here, we're getting a customer last name and basically do a count by limiting by the top 1,000 uh, rows. And that's where that number is coming from. For you to see results, we're going to go ahead and fetch that data. So right now it's going to Snowflake, it sent that query. And I believe if I go over to my Snowflake history, uh, we should see that query should have come by. Uh, if we do a refresh of that, hopefully we can see uh, that query came by in Snowflake. We've grabbed the data. And now we have that data uh, available in a report. Um, I'm not the best for visualization or creating interesting reports, but you can get really creative with this, change your visualization. If you want, uh, do a tree map or even a globe, right? Globe is not going to work here just because I don't have geospatial data, but you get the point. Now, once you have this, it's really good. You can go ahead and save, uh, say, let's save this as customer, as name, customer report. You can give that a name and now you can go ahead and save that. So think about the exercise that you go to uh, create this, uh, this report on this dashboard and you can save that. If I want another one, I can add a new worksheet. I've got a blank new worksheet. Let's look for birth, uh, date of birth. Uh, bear with me to double click that. Let's do another count. Uh, visualize that as a bar graph again and uh, fetch our record set. And we can go now to save this as date of a report. And you can basically go through this exercise of creating a bunch of reports uh, and have those available. Now, reports are good, but what teams might really want is um, going beyond reports to create a dashboard. And so this is where the concept of a dashboard comes into play. And a dashboard, if you think about it, is a combination of reports that you can collaborate and share uh, common insight. So sales dashboard, marketing dashboard, finance dashboard, or customers uh, service uh, dashboard. And so this is where that dashboard comes into play. You can create a brand new dashboard. As such, now we have our reports that are available. Uh, in this case, we can say, uh, let's take, uh, let's say, customer dashboard. All right, and now we can have a, a bunch of reports on that. So we did our date of birth. We can bring that in. We did, the, uh, what else did we do? Last name report. We can bring that in and age. We can bring that in and any other visualization that you have. Now you can stagger that into, uh, into a report. You can move things around if you really wanted to. Uh, just a nice uh, interface for, for you to work. If you want to edit that, change the title, uh, let's say age. You can go ahead and do the visualization here and now it gives it uh, a name if you want to delete something from the visualization we can i think i'm going to go ahead and delete that uh, this as well just so we have uh, the demo and this and now we've got a dashboard ready for us to use and what you can do is save this dashboard we call it customer dashboard and to save this we can associate it with specific users so thinking about collaboration here uh, you can put in your user, uh, protectory at gmail.com and the group we want it with the user. Uh, let's say we want through to have access to this or any group we might have created. 
and what workspace we want to make this available in, uh, you have the ability to do that. So uh, now go ahead uh, and share uh, this dashboard. So uh, voila, uh, there you go. Um, uh, you might have worked with different reporting tools and have different flexibilities, uh, but this is something that if you need a reporting tool and there's no other option out there, um, and you just have to get off the ground. A BIP could be something to consider depending on the scale of your organization or your team and the specific needs uh, that you have. Uh, just going back to home and to recap on this, a BIP basically is a BI tool uh, to help uh, modern businesses explore and gain insight on their data uh, in, in a very agile approach. It's delivered as a service. Uh, you can uh, basically log in with your email and what it allows you to do, uh, run SQL, connect to data sources, which we've seen Snowflake here, uh, create uh, visualizations or worksheets, or we call them, or it's called uh, in BIP and uh, be able to put all of that in a dashboard, which you can share and collaborate with other folks uh, within your team, within your organization. Uh, and all of this is uh, tied into um, into Git, so you can back up all of this uh, code or all of the visualization we built uh, into kind of uh, the modern data stack ecosystems like Git uh, for robust uh, source control. All right, guys. So there you have it. Uh, if you want to share the, the this in an email, schedule reports, embed links, uh, you have the ability to do all of that uh, within uh, uh, within uh, uh, Beep uh, .io. So I'm sure there's definitely more as you can see that you can do. Uh, I'm just limited by the version that I'm using, but hopefully you get the idea from a data stack ecosystem. Uh, it's something worth trying out if you are out looking for a BI tool. Uh, it really should be a, a quick and easy uh, platform to try to see if it meets your needs. And uh, if you have lots of data in Snowflake and you want to expose that, uh, Beep might just be a tool for you uh, to consider. All right, guys. So uh, this has been through. I hope this was helpful. Uh, check out uh, Beep. Link is going to be in the description below. If you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to let me know uh, in the comment section below. Uh, post your questions, or your comments, or your feedback on this. Have you liked it? Uh, do you not like it? Are there other tools you recommend? You want me to do a demo on? Please share all of those in the comment section below, and I'll see what I can do. Again, you have been very awesome uh, sitting through the presentation. I have been through, and I'll see you in the next demo.